Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavito, and here's how bad the fallout from all of these Sony racial emails is getting. Co-chairman Amy Pascal reaching out to Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson for healing. Hey, Amy, you might want to multitask here and bring a checkbook and start writing, because I know where this one's going, and so does the Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, Reverend, good to have you back. Um, Thank you. I suspect she's going to have to, to, to start doing more than saying she's sorry, right? No, she's going to have to pay up and pay up in good fashion. Uh, Jackson and Sharpton are not the gatekeepers to the black community or to black Americans. They do have a history of uh, sh uh, being shaped down artists. And the only way that this is going to end, Neil, is that corporate America, white Americans are going to have to stop giving in to these type of people. Because as long as they know that they can get the money, as long as they know that they can intimidate and get what they want, they are never going to stop doing what they are doing. And these people, I mean, it, this is why they're keeping black Americans angry. But so Reverend, that do we know where, that, them where does that money order. go? In other words, when you're doing a number of uh, funds that are backed either by Al Sharpton or the Reverend Jesse Jackson and AT&T, Viacom, SBC, some of these others pay up big bucks. What, what are, where is that actually going? What is that money actually doing? You know, I can honestly tell you, for the last 20 years or so, Jackson and Shopton and people like that, the NWACP and others, have taken this money under the pretense that it's going to help black America, the regular folks. And it never ends up in the pockets or the hands of the regular folks. It ends up in the pockets and, and hands of Jesse Jackson, Al Shopton, and others, and their friends. They said, well, we're going to give the money to the preacher or to the leader in the black community so that we can help the folks. But it doesn't trickle down to them at all. And had it trickled down to them, maybe we would see a, a better change in America. Yeah, and I was just looking at the numbers Americans. since beginning with, with Reverend Jackson, you know, uh, uh, back with the Rainbow Coalition, you know, gets involved and gets companies to pay up. Uh, yeah. The fact of the matter is uh, youth African-American unemployment is as high as it's ever been. And this has happened through Democratic and Republican presidents alike. And, and the economic plight remains pretty much uh, the way it's been for the African-American youth community. So I'm wondering what it's going to take to change that and whether whether it's ahead of Sony or whatever, it just gets themselves cover in the meantime, or at least get someone like an Al Sharpton off their back. And that's the best they can hope for. That's a good question. The only way that it's going to change, Neil, is that white Americans got to overcome the fear of being called racist. Because as long as they have that fear, they give power over to people like Shopton and Jackson and others. And then black Americans have to overcome this idea that they need a leader. And, you know, I mentioned that I grew up in Alabama under the Jim Crow laws. We didn't have leaders. Our parents were our examples until we left home. I left home at 18 years of age. I didn't have no leader over me to tell me how to think and <laughs> who is bad and who is good. Black Americans, it's abnormal as an adult to have a leader over you. And until black Americans say, no, you're not my leader as an adult. I'm my own leader and I'm over my own family. It's never going to end. And I have to tell you, the race hustlers do not want this to end because if black Americans go free, well, how would they intimidate white Americans? How would they say, well, give us money so we can help the underclass or help black Americans? They do not want this to end. And we need black Americans, need white Americans to get over that fear, stop financing these race hustlers. It's only hurting this country. The country is not bringing us together, Neil. It's dividing us even more so. It's embarrassing as a black man to think that white Americans or others out there think that I need a leader to tell me what to do and what not to, to, to do. It's time out for that type of stuff. That's very well put. I never thought of that way. You know, the whole idea of leading a, need, it, a leader to make you think anyway. Reverend, thank you very, very you much. You know what happened? Go ahead, finish You know thought. what happened to you at, at, at 18 years old? My grandmother raised me. She said, you're out of here at, at 18 years old. I'm going to prepare you. And I'm like, well, where am I going to go? I don't know, <laughs> and I don't care. I'm going to prepare you. My father told me that at 10. You he said I was just annoying him, Reverend. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. Very, very good point, my friend. Very good point. Uh, Merry yeah. Christmas, Reverend, and thank you very, very much. Thank you, Neil. Merry Christmas to you.